Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope you're well. I hope your day is going really, really well. Well, today, I want us to talk about the three M's of money. The three M's of money. Um, there are three M's to money. The first one is making money. The second one is managing money. And the third one is multiplying money. If you're going to increase financially as a believer, actually, if you're going to increase financially at all, whether you're a believer or not, you have to be able to do the three. You have to be able to make money. You have to be able to manage money. You have to be able to multiply the money. Today, we are only going to talk about the first M, which is making money. Um, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 13, 11, I'll read from the NIV and then I'll read from the NLT. The NIV says this. This is Proverbs 13, 11. Dishonest money dwindles away. But he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. He who gathers money little by little makes it grow. I believe it's the NKJV that says he who gathers money by labor makes it grow. The NLT says that wealth from get rich quick schemes, wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Wealth from hard work grows over time. The one thing that we all have to agree on is that God has always planned that we would increase by labor. That is why in the Bible, if you look at it from Genesis, God ordained work to bring fruitfulness. So the first thing he did with Adam is that he gave him work. He planted the garden and then he told, he gave him the work of keeping that garden and making sure that it remained in the state that God had handed it to him in. You know, it was supposed to stay in that state. It was supposed to be a fruitful place and he was supposed to guard it and keep it and nurture it and grow it. The same is true for us. Anytime that God puts work, he gives you work, whatever the work is, he's expecting that by that labor, you will become fruitful. You will increase, you will grow. And that is why he says he will bless the work of your hands. He will bless the work of your hands. He establishes the work of your hands so that you can increase. God loves it when his people prosper. Third John 2, it says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. It is God's great pleasure to see you prosper. He says, it says that the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servants. So when you're prospering, God is delighted. It is his great pleasure. It gives him pleasure to see you prosper, to see you increase. And the way that he has ordained for you to increase is by, by making the money through hard work. You are supposed to work diligently. You know, along the way, hard work, that term hard work, has really gotten a bad rap, you know, because people equate it to, to, um, to toil. And yes, we are delivered from toil. But hard work, in this sense, is actually being diligent in your work that you will wake up every day and report at your workstation like you're supposed to. And that while you're at work, you will work the whole time you are there. There are too many people out here who go to work every day, but you know, they're surfing on the internet, they're watching videos, they're playing around instead of working the whole time they are at work. If you actually make up your mind that when you go to work for those eight hours that you are there, you will actually be a, pro a productive employee or a productive business person, that you will be engaged in something that brings about productivity, you will be surprised how much you will cover in a day. You will be surprised how effective you will be. You see, the day is only 24 hours. God only gave us 24 hours. But those 24 hours are sufficient for you to increase exponentially by labor. So one of the things you have to do is make sure that you're cutting out time wasters. You know, that is something you have to determine. I will cut out every time waster in my day. Make sure you, are organ you have organized your day. You know, have a, what do you call it, a to-do list. Have a to-do list that you can check off and you say, today I'm doing A, tomorrow I'm doing B, tomorrow I'm doing C. You know, just have a checklist for each day so that every day you know what you are to cover. Obviously, you will need to prioritize it. You know, we are told that 20% of the work you do actually provides 80% of the value, you know. So prioritize that 20% that brings about the 80% of the value. Instead of doing all the other things, the 80% that only gives the 20% of the value. I hope you're getting my drift. So the thing is, we are supposed to labor. 
We are supposed to labor. God is blessing the work of your hands. And your labor is whatever it is God has given you. It could be a job. It could be a business. It could be a ministry. You know, it could be a ministry. Even ministry is work. Wherever the Lord has stationed you, that is where you're supposed to be laboring. And by your labor, you will begin to increase. And by your labor, you will begin to gather in wealth little by little. You will increase as you gather it in. Now, the other thing that we all have to do is to figure out, you know, is the income that you are making enough to meet your needs, you know, to support the kingdom of God, to do all the other things that you need to do, because of course you need to save, of course you need to invest, of course you need to build a home for your family and provide for them, and of course you need to give to the kingdom of God. God expects you to give to the work of the kingdom, to give to the needy and the poor. <clears throat> In fact, Paul says that, we are, you know, let him who has nothing to do become gainfully employed. Let him find work with his hands that he may provide for the one that doesn't have. You see, so your work is not just for you. You have to also be given to the poor. So every time you are sitting down and thinking about labor and looking at your income, you should not just be looking to see, you know, you just want the income that fits your needs, you know, to a T. And as long as your needs are met, you are okay. You know, there is greater there is more. There is always more. So I encourage you to begin also to think about passive income. You have to think about making money. What can you do without necessarily engaging in it every day? You know, what can you do in, in you know, whatever it is that you're gifted in, whatever it is that your calling is, how can you increase your income streams? Now, most people think that I'm saying that you should just pull this out of a hat. You're not supposed to pull it out of a hat. It should not even be coming out of your carnal mind. I have learned to pray through everything. If I want a passive source of income, pray about it. You know, start with prayer. Always start with prayer. As you are praying, God is able to quicken your mind and to bring something into your mind that you can do. He's able to give you ideas. You know, the Bible says, invest in seven ventures, even in eight. Invest in many ventures. Have multiple income streams. Have multiple places where wealth is coming your way. Open up many channels of income, you know, so that you are, you are prospering, you are moving forward, you are increasing day by day. That is the will of God for you. <clears throat> you have to agree that this is the will of God for you. You have to put it in your heart that you will, you know, you will put in the work that is necessary. You have to begin to pray that God will increase your revenue streams, that God will bring you passive income streams, that the work you are doing will bear fruit and will increase in, a, in an exponential way in the name of Jesus. You must stop being content with just the little that you're getting simply because your rent is paid and you have food in your belly. There are many other needs in the kingdom you know, that need to be met. Crusades need to be financed. We need to go out there and, you know, tell people about Jesus, send missioners out. There is work for us to do and all that work will take money. And that is why God is giving you money in this season. That is why God is bringing wealth into the hands of his children in this season, that they may finance the kingdom of God and finance the agenda of God. So the number one aim of money is making money. You have to make money. You have to make lots of it. It needs to come from different places. Many income streams, many revenue streams. You need to gather by labor, step by step, increase by increase, step by step, increase by increase. That is how it works. And God will be, is delighted when we are increasing. One of the prayers that was prayed here in Psalm 90... Psalm 90 verse 17. I want to, yes, here it is. It says, may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The NLT says, make our efforts successful. That is what we are trusting God for in this season. That is what we are trusting God for moving forward. That he will enlarge the work of our hands. He will establish the work of our hands. He will make all our efforts successful. Therefore, get out and do something. Find work. Ask God to lead you to an opportunity where you can begin to work. You will succeed. You will flourish this year in the name of Jesus. God bless you.